Well, good morning. Uh, it's uh, Thursday the 14th of March 2024 and um, I know this is unscripted and it's um, unprofessional therefore but I'm going to make a few comments of my own and some uh, some thoughts on what is happening in the coming weeks and months in relation to uh, Israel and some of the things that I will say uh, may even cause uh, some upset or disappointment or whatever it was different people that I actually know but I'm only just being honest about what is uh, in my heart let's say on some of these things and what my thoughts are and my, uh, you know, on how things are developing and how it is that uh, people in family, friends and people in the general public around the world are being given points of view by the so-called mainstream media, including I'm putting a bit of footage on here for just different uh, uh, things that are going on, but uh, also um, it's a case of uh, they've been given what, what, what you'd have to describe as uh, Israel-centric viewpoints, in other words, uh, oh well, Israel's defending itself. Uh, when they've killed uh, 30,000 uh, Palestinians, or well, two-thirds of them are, uh, are women and children. And they're about any, well, basically any day now, to invade Lebanon and to fight uh, Hezbollah. Now, um, lots of things come to mind about this. Uh, first of all, there are a number of Arab countries around the place that you might have thought would uh, uh, have intervened in some way by now, and they haven't. Uh, primarily because they're afraid of an all-out all war, uh, e even with uh, conventional weapons, it would be a pretty nasty war. But if it goes to full um, nuclear war, it would be an absolute disaster. It wouldn't be the end of the world, as some people call it. Uh, it would be a terrible disaster for the Northern Hemisphere, um, uh, and people are saying it's unlikely, oh no, even Russia is saying it's unlikely, but if we keep, keep on getting provoked and so on, uh, we we'll do it. So to make a couple of uh, points, shall I, on that subject, and that is to say Ukraine, then get back straight away, let's put it that way, uh, onto the main uh, issue, which I regard as the Israel situation. Ukraine is getting a little bit more money, which is almost pointless. Uh, and they will probably not get the 90 plus billions that they're looking for, which actually doesn't go to them, has constantly been pointed out by President Biden of the US. Oh, it goes to uh, our manufacturers. We're not putting boots on the ground. Uh, but, uh, sorry, folks, but there are experts top uh, soldiers to, of, of, who have the knowledge on how, in particular, to operate the uh, missile systems, which are very complex, in Ukraine. They're not there officially. They haven't got formations, as the saying goes, of uh, army and uh, marines or air force or anything of that nature in Ukraine. That is quite true. But these experts, and there may be a couple of hundred of, of advisors and experts are there to operate systems that the Iranians just couldn't possibly Ukrainians, not Iranians <laughs> the Ukrainians couldn't possibly operate themselves um, and that also goes, by the way if they're, if they're talking months from now getting F-16s and all that sort of thing and even who knows if there's F-35s or whatever that might get there that's ridiculous because the whole thing would... Uh, uh, the whole world would go up in smoke, so to speak, if all of that happened. Now, Ukraine will be running out of ammunition, that is to say, its uh, guns will not be able to have any ammunition uh, for uh, in about three weeks' time. So, artillery will be over and done. 
and they will have to negotiate with Russia and you'd say, well, oh, big bad Russians, but hang on. About 20 years ago, the people of the region voted to be, in some, in some cases, separate as a separate nation, but affiliated with the Russian Federation. And they're largely Russian-speaking people in what they call the Donbass and the Crimea. Crimea has been Russian for centuries, but it was handed over to Ukraine uh, by uh, Joseph Stalin uh, in the 1950s. Anyway, uh, that is one region that is, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're watching, um, the world is watching. But let's get on to the situation in Israel. Uh, it is uh, uh, horrendous. Um, well, we know about the death and, de and destruction in um, Gaza. But... I would put it this way. Uh, I will illustrate this with a, an actual, well, it's a photo of a map that um, shows greater Israel. Now, it's never going to happen. It's a, a joke. It's beyond any belief. Have a look at the countries that Israel wants to swallow up. Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, Lebanon would be Syria, Syria um, Jordan. They want to take the lot. And people talk about Russia wanting to take Western Europe, which it doesn't. They want the lot. Also, um, there, there are fundamentalist Christians and fundamentalist Jews alike make a mistake and thinking that this is, uh, oh, it's in the Bible, uh, oh, it's in Revelations, uh, Israel's going to be uh, surrounded on all sides, and oh, um, God's going to intervene, and, and uh, there's going, they'll, they'll have victory. All right, well, we've only got a matter of a few weeks, or a perhaps two or three months, I would think, at the most, to uh, see whether that is true or not. Now, I am a Christian, but not, I am not what is known as a fundamentalist Christian. In other words, I believe that the Bible is largely parables. Now, a parable is a story with a, a, mo a moral lesson in it, and I'm not going to go into the detail of some of those parables other than to say that Jesus taught in parables, and there are too many to mention on this video, but um, this is how it was, it was dealt with in the New Testament. And I believe it was dealt with that way in the Old Testament, whereas people make the tremendous mistake in believing and having faith in that, oh, the Old Testament says this and that and the other thing you mentioned, it, just whatever. And uh, well, that's the word of God, so that's the end of that. Uh, sorry, folks, but I reckon they're parables. But anyway... Uh, Here's the possibilities. One is it may be true. If that if that uh, those claims are true, then well that'll unfold in the coming weeks and months, and it'll horrify and amaze, let's say, the world if that if it was true, uh, for sure, because you you're coming towards what they call the end times. But the more likely outcome, in my view, is that. Uh, with Israel going to invade and fight uh, Hezbollah in the coming days, it won't be long before they do it, it's unlikely to invade or Rafa in, in Gaza at the same time. A, a two-front war is not a wise thing and is often lost. I look at Germany with a two-front war in World War II, which were, they lost that badly. There's that angle... But there's also the fact that the Hezbollah have 150,000 rockets. They've fired a few, and the so-called Iron Dome has prevented m many of them from reaching any any point in Israel. In other words, they've blown up, uh, haven't killed anybody. But when you're talking 150,000 rockets, that's a different matter. And also, Russia has already supplied... Iran with uh, hypersonic 
missiles, and that means missiles that fly twice as fast as bullets, let's say, can't be seen or shot down. And if those are fired at, nu at the nuclear stockpiles in uh, Israel, Israel's in big trouble. And if, if they fire directly at, at the Knesset, which is the, the uh, parliament of Israel, they're in really serious trouble. Then Turkey is, has got a two million man army and is likely to invade Israel and occupy it. Now, therefore, they'd be fighting Hezbollah, which they will, uh, they have stand a bad, a chance of losing, incidentally, even on its own. But if you get Hezbollah plus Turkey plus Iran all at the same time, you certainly get the surrounded on all sides scenario that's spoken of in uh, Revelations in the Bible. But it's likely to end very, very badly. And I would even say, go as far as to say that the country of Palestine might even be re-established. Israel could be defeated completely militarily and the re-establishment of uh, Palestine as a complete country is not, not beyond uh, possibilities here. Uh, well, a lot of people don't know that Jesus, for example, was a Palestinian Jew. And a hundred years ago, Palestine, or let's say in 1920, Palestine was 90% Arabs, in other words, Palestinians, and 10% Jews. By the uh, 20s and 30s, that, the number of Jews coming in increased, and finally in 1948... The Jews took a large proportion of Palestine throughout the Palestinians from that region. And then in 1967, things got worse. And Palestine now is, consists of a couple of extremely large, let's say, the world's largest concentration camp of West Bank and also uh, uh, Gaza. And the World Court of Justice has actually convicted Israel of genocide and uh, anyone who thinks oh maybe if there's a change of government maybe uh, if Netanyahu is uh, removed of course that would mean him going to court and probably to jail for corruption but maybe the opposition would uh, change their policy uh, sorry to give you the news but their opposition leader says he supports Netanyahu's goals in, in invading uh, uh, Rafa with a population of two and a half million school children in Israel sing songs about get, killing all of the uh, Palestinians and all pushing them out of their country which they've been living in for 5,000 years plus so I would just say that this sort of thing ha hasn't got long to run. Now, people are talking about it being an endless war there and an endless war in uh, Ukraine are quite wrong. Uh, talking about the coming months into years are quite wrong. I believe we're looking at weeks into a couple of months. Now, if I'm proven wrong, well, OK. But I'm making a statement today on the subject. And I'm putting it out publicly. And as far as I'm concerned, I follow people such as uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano and also Doug McGregor and Scott Ritter, uh, who are conservatives and have a great deal of knowledge. And in the case of the judge, interviews some people with tremendously uh, knowledge on places like the Ukraine and the war situation there and the war situation in Israel and the uh, politics behind it and the moves that are not seen by the general public uh, or not known by the general public in, in behind all of that. So some people viewing this would say, oh yeah, I know about that. And other people would, would say, oh, I'm totally shocked. Uh, how does this guy know what he's talking about? Well, you can call it uh, wild guesses if you like. You can call it uh, prophecies if you like. You can say, oh, it's a uh, shot in the dark. It's something he doesn't know. Uh, oh no, Israel, oh gee, uh, if you're a fundamentalist uh, a Christian or a fundamentalist Jew for that matter. Oh no, 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 uh, the Bible says this. No, I go by the Bible and uh, it's it's God's word and it says that. And uh, 
I get to ask the question, and it is a question, we're all entitled to ask questions in life. What if that doesn't turn out to be the case? What would they say then? Because Israel is mentioned in the Bible more than 2,500 times. So need I say that Israel is very, very important and central to the Bible? And to their faith, oh, let's say, out of the, well, the Jewish faith, because they always were looking for a homeland, whether it was belonged to them or didn't. And for Christians who thought, oh, well, we're going to return to their biblical home, and that's where they were thousands of years ago. Or maybe, but they threw out the Palestinians, as I said, and now, or they actually want to kill or expel two and a half million people out of uh of Gaza. Sorry folks, that's not going to happen in my opinion. So I've had my say on the subject, let's let's put it that way. And I would say to people, uh, be prepared in the coming weeks or next couple of months maybe for anything whatsoever to happen including a full-scale nuclear war. Now I'm pre not predicting that right outright oh it's going to be a nuclear war but there might be and there now is a great increased likelihood that that actually will happen uh, where we go from there I don't know we go, well I'm in Australia right now so they're talking about the 2032 Olympic Games in Brisbane folks do you want uh, a bet want to make a friendly bet that it'll never happen if there's a nuclear war no Olympic Games in 2032. If there's a nuclear war even in the next couple of months, forget about the Summer Olympics in Paris. That'll never happen. I'm not saying straight out this will never happen. I'm saying that if there's a nuclear war, it will never happen. So anyway, uh, I've, I've had my say on the subject and people are quite free to comment. I'd like some civil and polite comments. Uh, quite happy to have that and answer that to the best of my ability. So you have my point of view on the subject now. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please uh, comment. Now, anyone who wants to see most of my channel, uh, I'll describe it as 80 or 80 or 90 percent, is uh, transport related. Incidentally, mostly railways, uh, trams, light rail, buses, uh, ferries, uh, aircraft. You name it, it's all in there. So. Uh, uh, Please like and subscribe, and uh, if you want to see more of my uh, channel content, which uh, also if you type in the words uh, John Call Video, you'll get my channel, so and my uh, contents. So thanks very much for viewing.